In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss budget lines, and this video is part of a playlist. You can see the link below. Budget lines are typically taught alongside the difference curves, but in this tutorial, I'm just going to discuss budget lines. I'm going to show you what happens when the price of X goes up, and what happens when the price of X goes down. And I'll discuss this in a lot of detail. I'll do the same for the price of Y, if the price of Y goes up. What happens to the quantity of good Y consumed? And what happens to the quantity of good Y consumed if the price of Y goes down? I'm also going to show you what happens when the consumer income increases. The budget line shifts out, and I'll show you how that happens. And what happens when the consumer's income decreases and how the budget line shifts in. Along the x-axis, I will plot quantity of good x and along the y-axis, quantity of good y. And this is really per unit of time, but I will drop that. I'll draw in the budget line. It's the black line there. The equation for the budget line is total income is equal to the quantity of good X times the price of good X plus the quantity of good Y times the price of Y. This makes the assumption that the consumer spends all their income on good X and good Y. Often, income is labeled as M. I'll do that here. So I have the quantity of X times the price of X plus the quantity of Y times the price of Y. I'm just going to make up some numbers. I'm going to say income is equal to 300. And it could be $300, 300 euro, 300 pound, I guess 300 yen, whatever it is. But I'm going to not use a dollar sign or anything on this problem. If the consumer only purchases Y, they can consume 150 of it, quantity of 150. If the consumer only purchases X, they will consume 100 X. If I want to know the price of X, and I'm going to calculate that here, I take income, which is 300, is equal to the quantity of X times the price of X, which I'm trying to figure out, plus zero, because I'm not going to buy any Y, purchase any Y, so it's zero times the price of Y. Zero times the price of Y is this zero, so I can ignore that. So I'm left with 300 is equal to 100 times the price of X. I want to get the price of X by itself. So I multiply both sides of the equation times 1 divided by 100, the right-hand side, and I'll do the same on the left-hand side. Three hundred divided by 100 is 3, and this is equal to those two 100s cancel out. So this is equal to the price of X. So the price of X is 3. Let me write that out. So the price of X is equal to 3. And I should probably make that 3 green. Now, if the consumer only buys Y and no X, I'll move up the budget line to that point right there. So I have 0X times the price of X, and that's going to be 0, plus the quantity of Y, which is 150, times the price of Y. So I have 300 is equal to 150 times the price of Y. I'm going to solve for the price of Y, so I multiply both sides of the equation times 1 over 150. The right-hand side and the left-hand side. So 300 divided by 150 is equal to 2. And those 150s on the right-hand side of the equation cancel. So I have 
the price of y is equal to 2. So let me write that out again. So a price of y is equal to 2. And I'll go ahead and make that blue as well. Now if I want to solve for this gray dot, that point right there, in a generic way, I know at that point y is always 0. So I can write this as income is equal to x times p of x, and then solve for x. So I multiply both sides of the equation by 1 divided by price of x. And that's going to give me the quantity at that point, always. So the quantity is going to be equal to income divided by the price of x. That point becomes, if I want to know the quantity at that point, that's income divided by the price of x. Now, if the consumer buys no x, consumes no x, I use 0 for x. And so I have income is equal to y times the price of y. I'm going to solve for y, so I multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over the price of y. The price of y on the right-hand side, they both cancel. So I have y is equal to income divided by the price of y. Again, this is income divided by the price of y at that point. And this other point is income divided by the price of x. That's also the x-intercept. Anywhere along the budget line, income is constant. So anywhere along this line, income is going to be equal to 300. At this point, the consumer consumes 40x and 90y. So now I know the price of x is 3 and the price of y is 2. So I have 40 times 3 the price of x plus quantity of 90 which is y times the price of y which is 2. This is equal to 120 plus 180 and the last time I checked that is equal to 300. Anywhere along the budget line in this case income is equal to 300. So anywhere along this line income is 300 and income is constant along a budget line. Now imagine the price of x goes up. Let's say that the price of x goes up to 6, or doubles. The consumer will be able to buy less of x, but how much less? The way I solve for this new quantity, I take 300, which is my income, is equal to x, the quantity of x, times the price of x, plus 0, because the consumer will consume 0 at that point, times the price of y, which is 2. 0 times 2 is 0, and I can ignore that part of the equation. I'm going to solve for x, so I have 300 is equal to x times 6, I'm going to solve for x. So I multiply both sides of the equation by 1 divided by 6, left and right hand sides. This gives me x is equal to 300 divided by 6, or x is equal to 50. I'll make that green. When the price of x increases from 3 to 6, the budget line rotates in and a new quantity is 50, like that. The quantity of y does not change because income is still 300 and price of y is still 2. Remember that income, which is m, divided by 6 is equal to 50. Now, if the price of x goes down to 1, I can solve this by just taking income divided by the price of x. So this is equal to 300 divided by 1. Which is 
equal to 300. So the budget line rotates out to this new point right there. So it rotates out because the consumer can buy more at a lower price or consume more at a lower price. If the price of X goes up, the consumer can buy less of something. So the budget line rotates in like that. If the price of X goes down, the consumer can consume more of something and the budget line rotates out like that. Now if the price of Y goes up, the consumer will be able to consume less of it. So let's say price of Y goes up to five. The consumer will consume less of Y, but I'm not sure how much yet, but we'll calculate that. I take income divided by the price of Y is equal to 300 divided by five. And this is equal to 60. So the new quantity is 60 when the price is 5. So the budget line rotates down like that. If the price of Y goes down, the budget line will rotate out like that because the consumer can consume more of Y at a lower price. If the consumer's income goes down, let's say it goes down to 180, take the income divided by the price of Y, which is 180, divided by two, this is equal to 90. I'm holding price constant and reducing income. So now the consumer can only consume 90 units of good Y. If I want to know the quantity of good X consumed, I take 180 divided by the price of X, which is equal to 60. So now the consumer at a lower income can consume 60 of good X, or that point right there. As income goes down, the budget line shifts in, like that. And it's parallel to the old budget line, by the way. On the other hand, if income rises or goes up, let's say it goes up to 420. So I take income divided by the price of Y so I take 420 divided by 2. Now the consumer can consume a quantity of 210 of Y. Or that point right there. If I want to know how much the consumer will consume of X, I take income divided by the price of X, which is 3. And this is equal to 420 divided by 3 is 140. When income goes up, the budget line shifts out like that. And it's also parallel to the previous budget line. The slopes are the same. If income goes up, just to review real quick. If income goes up, the budget line shifts out. If income goes down, the budget line shifts in. If the price of X goes up, the budget line rotates inward like that. They can buy less of it, less of good X. If the price of good X goes down, they can buy more of it, more of good X. If the price of Y, the price of Y goes up, the budget line rotates like this. They can buy less of Y, less of good Y. If the price of Y goes down, they can buy more of Y, 
rotates out like that. In the next video, I'm going to discuss the slope of the budget line in some detail, and that will be coming up next. As always, share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Google+, Twitter. You can ask questions, comments, and the playlist is below. Don't forget to subscribe.